Hi everyone, this is Deekshit. Welcome to my channel. In this particular video, I'll gonna discuss about how to set up a scalable Jenkins on top of Kubernetes cluster. So now you might have a question. So why we need to set up a scalable Jenkins on Kubernetes cluster? Assume like you have a um, master slave setup, uh, three slaves and one master, and you're getting more number of builds every day. So in this case, uh, you might add up like few more nodes to handle that load. And the uh, RLs, like you need to make sure your build success, success uh, build will happen fast in a faster manner. And then uh, you'll give uh, your uh, nodes a space wherein like it can run the huge or cute jobs. So the, these kind of setup you need to do, you need to check like uh, how many nodes I need to add and these kind of things that you, you, you need to do if the number of builds are getting more and more. So to avoid that, so there are many methods, many uh, methods by which you can handle the scalability of Jenkins. So, but one of the popular one is you can use um, scalable uh, scalability of Jenkins on Kubernetes cluster. So now let uh, I'll gonna show you a demo on that. So before that, so I've uploaded all my uh, files that I'm gonna use in this particular uh, demo. So which is under Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes uh, repository. Under that, uh, I have a folder, Scaling Jenkins. Uh, here, I have files that I'm gonna use uh, under master, slave, and master persistent um, folder. So and also I've given the steps uh, to replicate the same scenario in your uh, cluster as well. And this is very detailed documentation that I've created. So if you face any issues like um, in, mid, in uh, between steps, I've given the solutions as well. You can follow those links and then you'll be able to solve that issues. So now let's get into the setup. So now um, I've already cloned those files onto my uh, uh, machine. So let me do get status. I'm checking if I'm if I did any changes. So let me add these things to make sure that Jenkins deployment, and then I'm pushing it. So now, uh, once I'm done with this, okay, maybe there are a few changes. Okay, I'll, I'll take care of this later. So now what we will do is, uh, we will uh, gonna see the files that I'm gonna create. So I have three folders. One is um, master, uh, master persistent, and a slave. So let, let me go inside this master folder. And here I have, uh, a Docker file, uh, Jenkins deployment and Jenkins service. First, let's have a look at uh, a Docker file. So by using this Docker file only, I've created a Docker image. I've already pushed onto my Docker hub and that image only I'll be using it in my uh, Jenkins Kubernetes deployment. So this Docker file is very simple. I have taken a, a base image, uh, so which is given by Jenkins and the flavor is Alpine flavor. And I want to, to showcase this demo. So I want to have a few plugins installed. So it's, it's, it's slave or Kubernetes. And these are uh, other plugins that I'm uh, installing it. And then I'm making a uh, user as Jenkins. So that is, that's it. So the Docker file is not uh, that much difficult. It is straightforward. I'm taking base image. On top of that, I'm installing uh, plugins which are required. And then um, I'm running uh, this uh, image I'm setting uh, user as Jenkins. So by using this, I've already created an image. And now let's have a look into uh, Jenkins deployment.yml. So let me open this. And this is also um, nothing special in this. The only, the basic configuration I have given, API version, apps v1, kind is deployment, and the metadata, uh, here I've just given a labels. And as you can see here, so I'm gonna do all these things. I'm gonna create all these things in a namespace called as Jenkins. So also I have one replica. And again, I'm giving the selectors, Jenkins master latest. And you can see here, if you see the containers, I'm using my own uh, image that I've created. As I mentioned, I've already posted to docker.com. So wherein I'm pulling it from there, if it is not present in my local. 
and then i'm giving few environment variables uh, to make sure my jenkins up uh, uh, jenkins up and running without like if you don't give this option what happens is like um, it'll going to ask you to enter the admin password and then uh, so you need to install uh, suggested plugins if you remember if you know uh, the installation steps for jenkins so so the, those things will going to ask for me so i don't need those things should be prompted to me so i just like uh, when i open jenkins home page i should be able to see the home page without asking any sign in or uh, sign up buttons so now uh, so and also i have one service i have created a node port for this so you can see api version b1 and then i'm giving a labels and again a namespace which will be created in uh, jenkins namespace and you can see the ports uh, i'm giving 80 port and 8080 this is a port mapping and also selector so in selector, uh, it should have the labels, whatever I've used for my pod. So these are the labels I'm using it here. So now let's go ahead and create this. And here I'm not using uh, any pers persistent volume concepts because if you want to make sure your Jenkins, because the jobs and the users, all the information will be there in uh, your uh, Jenkins home, right? So you want, if you, let's say if you want to make that as a persistent, you can go to this folder and refer the files in this particular folder. But to make it simple, I'm just gonna use um, uh, the master folders uh, files and I'm gonna create all those things. kubectl, apply, and if f, I'll give just dot so that uh, there are two files. Okay, sorry about that. So I need to create first a Jenkins namespace. So command for that is kubectl, create ns and Jenkins. So when I do this, it will going to create a namespace to make sure I'm just doing kubectl get ns. I'll be able to see the Jenkins has been created. So now, so let's set the context. So now let me check on what namespace I am there. Config view. So when you check this, you will be able to see like I'm right now in default. So let's change this to Jenkins because I'm gonna uh, work with these uh, objects in Jenkins namespace, right? So let, let me go there, kubectl, uh, config, set, context, iPhone and iPhone current, and iPhone and iPhone namespace. Uh, is equals to Jenkins. So now uh, when I execute the same command, I should be able to see your Jenkins. So now let's go ahead and create our objects, deployment and a service. Okay, now when I do kubectl get all, it might take few seconds to make my Jenkins master up and running. So which is already up and running. And um, also you can see I've created a a node port, okay? And I want to check like uh, on what node it is created. So which is basically on node one. So node one, and I want to use node one's IP. And then with this port, I'll be able to access my Jenkins. So let's go to my browser and my node one IP is 34 dot. So this is my node one IP. With the, the port I need to take from um, here. Uh, so the node port is 13432. So let's take this. And now I'll be able to see uh, Jenkins home page. So now you can see which is coming up. So see, this is my Jenkins home page. And you might not be able to see uh, many of the options because I've uh, install very few uh, plugins, right? That's the reason you won't be able to uh, see many of the things. And uh, as I said, so so very important um, plugin is in our case, which is SSH slaves and the Kubernetes. So that is what I have used uh, installed. So that's the reason so I'll be able to see the plugins installed, those plugins installed in my case. So once that is done, so click on Manage Jenkins Configure System. To uh, also to make sure uh, this uh, you're running your jobs and like 
Kubernetes pod, pods, slave pods. So set this usage to uh, only build jobs when uh, with the label expression matching this node. So once you select that, just uh, save it. And once the save is done, so again, you need to go back to there. So you need to configure cloud details. Click on manage Jenkins, go to the end. And in the cloud section, click on uh, a separate configuration page and then uh, select in a add new cloud, select Kubernetes. And once you select that, you'll be able to see this particular page. Click on cloud, Kubernetes cloud uh, details. And here you need to give the Kubernetes URL so that you will get it by using kubectl cluster info. So in my case, I'm using uh, uh, kubeadm setup. So if you're using minikube also, you'll be able to see this information by using the same command. So now once this is done, so just click on test connection. So it should be, you should get uh, this message connected to Kubernetes, whatever the version I'm using. And then you need to give Jenkins URL as well. Uh, so in my case, what I'll do is HTTP and the slashes and let me get my service name, get SVC and I'll be able to get the service name. Just give this service name here. And once this is done, just click on save. And once save is done, so again, I should go there. Sorry about that, I would have applied and then at the last I would have. So now you'll be able to see that details that you've configured previously. And now you need to click on pod template, add pod template, and just like um, pod template details. Just give the name here. So in my case, maybe I'll just give Jenkins slave and the namespace, I should do it in Jenkins, right? And then the labels, I'm just leaving it as empty. And here I need to select use this node as much as possible. This is a slave, right? I need to use this as slave. So as much as possible. And then click on add containers. So click on container template give the name GNLP. Also like Docker image, uh, for example, in my case, I had a particular requirement wherein I wanted in that slave do Docker should be installed. If, if you want that, so maybe you can use this uh, a slave a folder. I, in that I have a Docker file. You can use that and you can create image and then you can use that image. But uh, so uh, to keep simple, so in hub.docker.com, uh, we have an image. So which will be provided by Jenkins itself. So we can search for that Jenkins CI. So this is the one JNP, JNLP slave. You can copy this image name, uh, Jenkins C, CI JNLP a slave, and then you can give it here. And then uh, you can take off this default commands, commands to run and arguments to pass because if you give those things, it'll be slept for like longer time. So I don't need to do that. So once these changes are done, just click on save. Now your setup is done. So now what you need to do is go back to your Jenkins and click on new item. And so let's create one uh, test job, a uh, freestyle. And let's go here. And what I'll do is uh, click on execute shell. So let me give the command host name so that it will it'll display the host name for me. Okay, so now uh, let's click on save. Now what we will do is uh, let's click on build now. So now what should happen is here. So as you can see on the screen, Jenkins is reserved for like master node as a label. So there we have selected, right? So you say it should be whenever you have a label, then only use it. So that's the reason it is waiting. So in meanwhile, what we can do is go to manage Jenkins. And so now it would have created one of the slave. You can see slave has been created and it is running the job on the slave. Okay, now when I go back and I should be able to see my test job is successful. And when I see the console host name, right? I've just given host name. You can see my host name. So once that is job is done, so that slave will be deleted. And again, when I just click build now again, 
it will be creating one more slave and it will be running on top of that so this is how like if you have uh, assume like you have much multiple jobs which are coming up and uh, so you can use this method uh, wherein uh, to accommodate all those jobs so rather than making to wait in a queue until a slave becomes free to pick up that particular job you can use this kind of um, a scalable mechanism scalable thing a kubernetes setup to make sure your jenkins builds are happening as soon as uh, it triggered so now you can see the slave is different so in this if you remember this is a second build uh, wherein like it is b7 m and p and when in, when you go back to the first one so it should be different so you can see it is tk srm so this is how uh, you can set up a scalable jenkins on kubernetes cluster so now this my setup is not persistent uh, so if you want the persistent so then uh, you can go ahead and you can use as i mentioned earlier so you can go ahead and you can use this uh, particular wherein uh, uh, things so here if you see i have used maybe uh, i have removed that but there has to be some uh, like a uh, few things uh, the persistent volume for persistent climbs that i have used so let me go inside this i'll just update these files and i'll keep it so you can see when i do cat on uh, jenkins so you can see the persistent volume pvc pv and all so you can make use of these concepts and you can make your jenkins persistent so that if master node goes off also you'll have the data related to that so yeah so that's it for this video so if you like the video please share and subscribe thank you have a good day